Okay, in this tutorial we're just going to take a look at uh, the local and global axis again. And because this is, tends to be problematic and shows up in everything, whether you're using the logic bricks or whether you're using Python code, I use global and local axes all the time to keep sense of everything that I'm doing. And I'll show you where we can get you into trouble. Because So within here I've been designing this helicopter and pretty soon all those dials and clocks and gauges that I've been working on are going to start going inside custom versions of the helicopter and the vehicles when I finally get around to releasing this as a tutorial or a game or whatever. And then you'll be able to buy other assets, you know, for uh, to really enhance, you know, you might have a really custom chase vehicle perhaps. But let's see what the tornado is doing in this case. This is just that regular tornado right now. I happen to like this particular tornado, even though he's not the most realistic tornado. But I like the way he jumps around and just, I don't know, he's fun. But anyway, so... Uh, so in this case, maybe I want to design a helicopter blade because right now it's just an extruded part off of the helicopter. This is all one piece right now. So I have this that might serve as my helicopter blade. Looks a little wide here, like this. But we'll worry about that later. So I'll go into the logic bricks. So game logic, and I'll add a keyboard sensor. There, I'll click here, press H, go to the controller, put an AND controller. Could have used something else, and then I'll go get a motion actuator connect those together and then what we're going to use is rotation I'm going to rotate it on Z 25 degrees like this I'm going to go back into here and then you'll notice I'm, I'm rotating on Z because I want it to rotate around that axis right of course that's really what I want alright so when I start it up let's see I start it and if I press H let's see Well, it seems to be working. I guess I didn't mess it up that time. All right, so let's see why. So global and local, uh, that's because our global and local axis are the same in this case. All right, but sometimes what you'll do is you'll get into trouble. Maybe you had, had designed your object, let's say, let's change this up a little bit. Let's change it so maybe you were, when you built it, S Z, you built it like this, and S Y, and then RX90, and maybe you had built it like this for some reason. And now I want to get press P and start the game up. Then it's rotating on the wrong axis, right? Even and you. So in that case, you have to go into the logic bricks, into the game logic, and you would change this to work on the global axis by taking that off. All right. So then when I come back into here, then. It is rotating on the global axis, even though the local axis has Y as the direction that you would want to rotate it. And we'll change that here in a second. So, so I'll start it up. And let me see when I rotate it. Then it's rotating back like that. And you'll run into the same thing in the uh, Python where you have the apply rotation command. And in that case, the um, you'll have a false or true at the end of the apply rotation command. If you put it to true, that's for local rotation. So like this. So if I wanted to come in here and change this so it was actually rotating on the local axis, then I'd have to change this and make this 25 degrees in here instead. Like that. Now this might be redundant for a lot of you, but you know when I first got started using Blender, this concept of global and local and normal axes was like uh, you know, I couldn't just couldn't, couldn't quite deal with it. <laughs> you know, it just threw me for a loop for the longest time. Well, not the local so much, but the normal axis and everything else. And uh, so, just in case you haven't seen it before, and well, okay, well that's for now, and I'll see you in the next video.